Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Man, it's, uh, it's so incredible uh, to look out and see uh, how many uh, people are coming to celebrate our families today. Um, you know, we as a church, we like to talk about how we're family, and I mean, most churches say that, right? But it's cool to look out and know that even across the Edmonton and across Alberta, even into BC, we're all gathered together in one place to celebrate our families and dedicate our kids together. And it's incredible. And so I just want to say thank you for coming on my behalf because today we're dedicating one of my kids as well as on behalf of everyone else whose ch children are getting dedicated today. It is an honor that you are here with us today from grandparents to friends uh, and, and aunts and uncles and cousins. It's an honor that you're here. And again, my name is Dustin. I'm the lead pastor here along with my wife, Beth. And again, we're so grateful that you're here with us today. And I found some parenting thoughts or ideas. Thank you. Uh, some, uh, some parenting thoughts, ideas, or jokes this week. And the first one I saw was this, is that 90% of parenting is thinking about when you can lie down again. Yo, if you're a parent, you know, right? <laughs> like there's, there's moments at night where you're just laying in bed and you hear them cry. You're like, ooh, I can't wait to go back to sleep, you know? Number one, uh, there's this a quote from uh, Jerry Seinfeld and he said this, a two-year-old is like, it's kind of like having a blender that, does, that you don't have the top for. Um, it's true. It's the truth. It's the truth. Now this one here, this is a recipe for iced coffee right here. Number one, have kids. Number two, make coffee. Number three, forget you made coffee. Number four, drink it cold, right? Yo, sometimes in the morning your microwave gets a lot more used than it should just because of cold coffee, right? Yo, know, and then the last one here is this one. This is my kid, my daughter Jane to a T. It says, hi, my daughter will be late to school because she can zip her jacket by herself. Yo, <laughs> yo. I, see, I think they're jokes, but I think they're actually just fact, you know? This is actually true, but today is, a, is our child dedication and this is such an exciting day um, for parents, such an exciting day for families. And you know, when I was a child, I was dedicated uh, in my church. And then I was later baptized in the same church. And then I later came on staff at the same church. And, you know, God moves through generations, through grandparents and parents and children. And, and the, the kids that we're dedicating today, even the children in our church are the future leaders, you know, the, the children in our church are the fu future politicians and doctors and tradespeople and pastors that are going to make an impact on the world. And I believe our responsibility as, as, as older people, you know, is to, is to honor our children, is, is to love our kids and, and raise them and train them and love them and take care of them. And, and as we all know, raising children takes a village, and some of us, we have a very large village, and some of us, our village is a little bit smaller. Some, some of us, we, we need, and we look around this room, I want to encourage you as we look around this room as parents, these are the people that will be here for you when you need it. How many of y'all know as parents, we need each other? We need each other when things are tough, and we need each other when things are awesome. We need one another. It takes all of us to love our kids. And a child dedication is an amazing opportunity for us as parents to publicly commit to fully trusting God with our kids. See, God has blessed us with children and our response is to dedicate them and give them back to him. And we all have opportunities to love and teach and train and Today, we as, we as parents, again, and as a church, we make this decision. One of the hardest, I think, decisions as parents is, is trusting God with the future of our children. That even when they're sick, even when it's tough, we trust that God is going to take care of them. And we understand the truth that God loves our kids more than I do. And you know how hard that is to realize most days? I look at my kid, I'm like, no one can love you more. And God's like, just watch me, you know? I love your kids more than you do. 
See, we are committing as we dedicate our children, we're committing to, as parents, to raise them in the way they should go is laid out in Proverbs 22, which is this, direct your children onto the right path and when they are older, they will not leave it. I think this is every uh, follower of Jesus's dream for their children is that they will continue to follow Jesus after they leave your home. One of our greatest responsibilities is to do this, to direct our children, to train them and raise them to follow the right path, to get them connected to the right people, to connect them with the church and to connect them, more importantly, with Jesus. And I'm sure you've heard this before, that that your children are just a mirror of you. And so if we see our children, you know, starting to walk away or we see our children not spending time in prayer or the scriptures, I think the first thought is, what can I do to make my relationship with Jesus better first? I think sometimes we look at our children and we say, man, I wish they were this way. I wish they would do this. And it's like, as our responsibility as parents is to, to live it out and let them follow. That as we follow Jesus, they follow Jesus behind us. That we're the leaders of our homes. We're the leaders of our families. And we direct them by living our lives, following Jesus, learning to become more like him, committed to his word and committed to his life. And as we live our lives dedicated to him, we show our children how to do it. We teach them how to respond when storms come, by how we act when storms come up. And the reality is, as parents, we're not perfect. I think as parents, we wish we were perfect. We wish we always said the right thing. We wish we always did the right thing. We wish we responded different. We wish we said things different. We're imperfect parents. We're imperfect people. But we have to realize the beauty of the grace that God pours out on each and every one of us. And as we receive that grace, our responsibility is to show that same grace to our kids. We have to be quick to forgive and quick to apologize. Now, even as we talk about, you know, uh, this, that as a child dedication is about dedicating our kids, it's also about our parents, but the reality is about a child dedication is that it's also about all of us in this room today. It's about all of us committing to holding our parents up to their commitments and being there for our parents when things are challenging and being just a phone call away when they need someone to watch them. To be there for one another. To be there for each other in our struggles. And we all know that we as parents have struggles. And we need to realize that every child is a gift from God. As this is laid out for us in Psalm 127. It says this, children are a gift from the Lord. And they are a reward from him. And I've been a parent, feels like not very long, but it's almost been four years already. Now, some of y'all have been parents for like 50 years. And like, I'm like, teach me your ways, you know. (laughs) Teach me. I've been a parent almost four years. And there's many things that I've learned along the road as a parent, as we all have. And some of, some of us, like me, sometimes we learn slower than others. And some of us, we learn different things at different paces, but I've learned so many things. I've learned so many things through, the, through to understanding what lack of sleep actually feels like. Waking up in the morning for work, being like, I don't, I don't know if this is going to happen today. Then I'm like, but I got to make sure my family can eat some good food, though. You know, as I've learned through the not sleeping at night or the sick kids or the tantrums that come up or, or, the, or, or just all the things that come up, but I've also learned through the beauty and the beauty of what? The relationship I have with my children. The beauty of their first steps and saying dada before they said mama, both of them. In fact, Jane said dada on, Jane, on Beth's birthday. I don't know, best birthday of my life, you know? It wasn't even mine. The beauty of these relationships, the laughing uncontrollably with my kids. You know, being a parent is so hard, but it's the best gift I've ever received. I think as parents, we we know this and we live it out, and but there's days you're like, ooh, I don't know, you know? My patience is being tested today. The beauty of the trips we've taken and 
the holding of my kids when they're sick. I knew I was gonna cry, I knew it, I knew it. And y'all are like, I knew it too, you know. You cry every week, you know, I was like. But the beauty of holding them when they're sick, as hard as those moments are too. The the moments of singing silly songs or singing Jesus loves me every night. The moments of praying for my kids and, you know, I wouldn't change anything. I have two beautiful daughters and I wouldn't change anything for the world. When we first had kids, I was like, man, I want a son. Now that I have two daughters, I'm like, I'll have another daughter, you know, they're the best. They're the best. But I wouldn't change anything. See, these are the greatest gift I've ever received in my life for my two children. See, they've changed me uh, as a man. They've changed me into a father. They're the best. And each one of these children that are in this room, whether they're getting dedicated today or not, they're a gift from God, each and every one of them. A gift from God with talents and abilities and, and, and callings on their lives that we as a church and we as parents are to steward inside of them. When we see our kids have something, we, we build it in them. Even if it's different than us, even, even if the, what, what God has called them to do is something we don't fully understand, our responsibility is to start to understand it, to learn what our kids love. Each and every one of them is called by God to do mighty things. And our job as parents, grandparents, friends, godparents, aunts, and uncles and cousins is to create spaces for them to look to grow, spaces for them to learn, and spaces for them to ask questions and pursue a life fully devoted to Jesus. These are the future leaders of our church. See, this is what the Bible says about children, and it's Matthew 19, 14. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like children. See, in the kingdom, children are important. At Known Victory Church, children are important. The children of our church are very, very important and very, very valuable. So we're to welcome children, let them come to us to teach them how to live and teach them how to love and teach them to honor and teach them to take care of people. So today, as we dedicate these children, we let the children come. We dedicate them to the Lord and we trust that God will take care of them and love them. And so today, we're excited to be dedicating six children from five different families. Let's give it up again. It's amazing. It's amazing. And so what we're going to do, how it's going to look, just so you kind of get the grasp of it all, is rather than have each family stand up here for 25 minutes, try and keep your kids on a stage for 25 minutes, okay? It's not going to happen. So we're going to invite one family at a time. And then at the very end, we're going to invite all the families up and we're going to dedicate them together. And so the first child that we're going to be dedicating today is actually my baby, which is Marin. So I'm going to invite up uh, my wife, Beth, and, and Jane, and my mom can come if she wants to, and uh, Marin. Our kids are all around the room. This is Jane right here. She's, she's the best, I swear. And then uh, Marin, she's also the best. They're both, they're both first best, you know what I mean? And so what it's going to look like is each family is going to have a few minutes just to share. And so Beth's just going to share a little bit about the dedication today. All right, well, here we go. Um, So I'm just gonna chat a bit with Marin and then, um, yeah, go from there. So Marin, you were and always will be our rainbow in the storm. When we found out you were on your way into our little family, we were so excited and also a little bit unsure of why God chose to send you to us um, in the season we were in. (laughs) A time that we didn't feel was very steady or stable. Through the storm of grief, hard work, uncertainty, exhaustion, and perseverance, we were constantly reminded of God's faithfulness to protect, heal, and provide for all of our needs because of his love for us. Your little growing life was such a comfort and joy and source of hope in a very stormy time. As I've been thinking about what to share for the last few days, I started to think about your name and what it means for you. Marin means of the sea, and it has fit your personality in many ways already. 
The ocean is an incredible part of nature that can be serene and beautiful one moment and then very quickly build up to a storm that is powerful and a force to be reckoned with. Both forms of the same ocean serve amazing purposes that they were created for. Very soon after you were born, we realized that much like the sea, you are sweet, loving, and affectionate, and also a little fiery and fierce. We know that these are traits that God has carefully chosen for you long before you were ever created. Yes, I know. <laughs> long before you were ever created, and we promise to do our best to raise you in an environment that allows you to learn God's purpose in all of it. We promise to be parents that walk humbly and listen to the voice of God in everything that we do. Okay, hold on. We promise to do our best to nurture your gifts and talents so that you can someday serve Jesus to the very best of your ability. We promise to laugh, have fun, grow together as a family, and daily learn how to love each other well while finding forgiveness quickly. Thank you for being our constant reminder of God's goodness and always laughing at our jokes. We love you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Beth and the Bennett family. So you guys can go take a seat. We're gonna invite up our next family. Give it up for them. Give it up for them. Next up, I want to invite up the Gunch family out to come. Um, and so you guys can make your way. I know some families have you know, a couple of people who are going to share whatever. So come up, uh, Gunch family. And let's give it up for them as they come up. Look how cute these kids are, by the way. The best kids in the world. Jackson, <clears throat> your, your name means son of Jack. God is gracious. God has been gracious. Psalm 27, 13 says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And Isaiah 30, 18 says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. We believe you will carry hope and grace with you wherever you go. That wherever you set your feet, the Lord's goodness will shine through for all to see. Jackson, when you came around, God started doing a new thing in our lives, making it fresh, new, and better. We believe this holds significance for you, that you carry with you new life. The good news of the gospel will shine through you, and you will be a leader to many, pointing them to new life in Jesus. Jackson, you are a world changer. You have a go-getter attitude and are not afraid to let others know how you are feeling with your loud screams and yells. We believe that you will be a natural leader. Your middle name, Asher, means happy. This is very true for you. You are always smiling and laughing, spreading your joy to everyone. So just to introduce myself, I'm Pam, Patricia's friend, and I was just sitting in the crowd and I was thinking how long we've been friends for and I figured, oh, it's been 30 years now. So <laughs> we've walked through a lot together and I wouldn't do anything but walk through your kids and walk in this path with you. So. Jackson, you are a very special boy. You were prayed before, before you were even born. The trust in the Lord came even before your first breath. I remember walking with Trisha through her pregnancy and there was a lot of things where that weren't going the way that she thought it should go. And we prayed together and we trusted in the Lord and Patricia was okay with whatever God had in mind for her, but God had Jackson safe and ready and willing to come into this world. And God knew what he was doing when he knit you together in the womb. He knew you'd come into this wonderful family and be unconditionally loved. Jackson, you are so lucky to have strong roots to lead you on the right path. This brings me into the meaning of a name that I found for you, which means righteousness. God has made you righteous. As I pray for you, I feel God will make you prosperous, not only with assets, but also with your personality. You will be so infectious to others. I feel God has big things in store for you. I feel that you will be mighty. You will spread the love of Jesus to those who even see you smile. And then 1 John 2, 29 says that if, that if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. So that being said, we know you were born of God born into his perfect plan, born to share the love of Jesus. And because of all this, you are righteous. And so today I pray over Trish and Lewis. I pray God will guide you, lead you in his path to raise all your children to follow and know God and his love for this world. Pray that even when it may seem difficult, that God is the one who you turn to and let him lead you in raising your children to know that you love him. Pray as Jackson grows, anything that may be in question is a question he turns back to God. We will always pray a blessing over all of you as a family and whole, that God keeps his promises to all of you. And if you guys do straight path, I will be the one to kick you right back <laughs> to God. <laughs> yeah. All 
All right, thank you, thank you. We can give it up for Gunch family. Next, I want to invite up uh, Micah and Megan uh, Denotter who are here. They're going to come. So let's give it up for them as they come. We've got some amazing families here. And so, yeah, it's an honor again today. So, yeah, Micah and Megan, you guys can share. chose the name Malachi, which means messenger of God. As we dedicate Malachi today, we pray and declare not only for our son, but for all the children that will come after us, that we will raise a generation that will spread the gospel and be the salt of the earth. Malachi, you are sweet, kind, and full of joy. Your smile is gentle and your laugh makes us smile. You truly are a gift. I'm going to cry. <clears throat> the problem is whether I can, you know, get the words out through the sobs. Okay, dear Lord, thank you so much for this precious gift. <sighs> this beautiful child whom we dedicate to you today, Lord. <sighs> we pray that you protect this gift that you have given us. We also pray that you give us the strength to be good stewards of this amazing gift. We declare that the plans of the enemy to seek, kill, and destroy this child shall not come to pass in Jesus' name. This child is a blessing and will grow to be a blessing to those around them. Amen. 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 Next, I want to invite up the Stauffer family. And so Stauffer family, you can come up. Let's give it up for them as they come. Dedicating uh, two children today. Um, which is amazing. And so here they are, a beautiful family. Yeah, you're coming on the stage. It's going to be fun, man. Yeah, is it, it's allowed now. All right, excuse me if I'm a little nervous. Um, there's a lot of people. <laughs> um, I have the honor and, and privilege to raise up two boys. I got Elijah here and Adam as well. And... Um, I was praying the other day and I was, I was going for a walk with the Lord and thinking about and meditating what to say and what he wanted me to share. And I just remember him pouring out to me is he, he felt so much love that I was even just talking to him and giving him time. And I felt like the Lord was saying he wants me to, and I, that's my goal as a father is to raise Elijah and Adam to know the Lord and to point them to him ultimately because he's a better father than even I could be to them. And... <laughs> And uh, Elijah is obviously my oldest, and uh, he was life-changing for me. And I remember when he was born, everything felt really new and different, and I don't like change that much. And um, hearing him once in a while, or if he sees me have a bad day, and he coming up to me and, and say, Jesus, help Daddy, amen. And although it's super simple, it, it brings so much. I've almost cried multiple times from it. And uh, I'm going to raise Adam the same way. And I'm so thankful even for how far my son has come. And I'm so blessed. And I'll just do a quick prayer. So, Lord, I thank you for my children. Lord, I pray that you continue to bless them, Lord, that we will raise them up, Lord, and dedicate them to you, Father. And I thank you that they are always okay in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you. Thank you. And then we want to invite up our last family, the Walter family. So let's give it up for the Walters as they come. Yeah, so we've been parents for two and a half years now, and I can honestly say that children are a blessing, but I can also say that we can't raise them without God, and so that is why we're here to dedicate the uh, little shepherd here. Um, yeah, and so just want to pray with him. Lord, you know, we thank you for Shepherd. Lord, I pray that you would be with us as we raise him. You'd be teaching us what to teach him and, you know, just helping him sleep sometimes so we can sleep sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we just thank you so much for him. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I want to invite up all our families and all their kids uh, up here and we're going to dedicate 
um, our children today. Let's give it up again as all the families come. Um, they all look amazing. Families and all the children you look up. I mean, you can see them on the screen, but they're here in person too, right? So, but man, what an honor it is uh, to, to have this privilege. One of my favorite things to do is to be a part of, uh, of dedications. It's, it's always an honor. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask some questions. Uh, we're just going to ask uh, some questions to you today uh, as parents. And then you guys can respond um, just by saying we do. Um, and so, yeah, just a, a few of these questions that we commit to as parents. And this is me committing as well. Uh, so is, is, do you recognize uh, these children as the gifts of God and give heartfelt thanks for God's blessing? Do you now dedicate your children to the Lord who gave them to you all, surrendering all worldly claims upon their lives and hope that they belong wholly to God? Do you pledge as parents with God's fatherly help, you will bring up your children in the instruction of the Lord, making every reasonable effort with patience and love to build the word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Lord into their lives. Do you promise to provide through God's blessing for, the, uh, for all the needs of your children looking to your heavenly father for wisdom? And do you promise with God helping you to make it your regular prayer that by God's grace, your children would come to know and trust Christ Jesus alone for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of their sins? All right, well, let's stand. And we're gonna pray for our families today and pray for our children today. So let's stand and pray. God, we thank you for each and every one of these families here today and each and every one of these parents here today coming to dedicate their kids to you. And God, I pray from, from the youngest to oldest, God, I thank you that each and every one of these children are a blessing from you and a gift from you. And so God, we just pray for every parent we just pray for every parent right now, God, that you give them the strength. God, you give them the wisdom. God, you give them the, the creativity. You give them the community to help them raise their children up in the ways that they should go. God, each mother, God, I thank you that, that you continue to, to grow them as mothers. And every father, God, I thank you that you help them grow as fathers and grow as men, God. God, I thank you that each one of these children is going to grow up to be a fully devoted follower of you. God, that, that they will give their lives to you. And so God, today we dedicate these children to you and say, we say, God, we trust you with our kids. God, we trust that you are going to take care of them. God, we trust that you love them even more than we do. And so, God, I even just pray for all of us in this room today that as our parents look out into the crowd, God, I thank you that they are seeing faces of people who will be there for them in their hardest moments. God, that we as friends and family will be there for them. That we will be a phone call away, even if it's inconvenient. Even if it's not something we want to do, God, I pray that we will be there for each other. And we will be there for them. God, I pray blessing over each family. That every need will be met. Every need in their lives will be met in Jesus' name. And God, today we give them to you. Again, God, we trust you. And God, I thank you that you're raising these kids up to be leaders and people who will carry your love wherever they go. In Jesus' name. Amen.